Hello, my name is Matt Van One, and welcome to my review of Captain America Civil War. What a great way to open the doors of Phase 3 Marvel movies. I mean, this movie is fun, it's entertaining, it's thrilling. It's what all those um, those TV spots before a movie were saying, so, to quote them. So now, this movie is a direct sequel to The Winter Soldier, and also a tiny bit of Age of Ultron, because there's like Scarlet Witch, and like bunch of Sokovia, those type of things. So, so this movie starts off in the Hydra base and we see uh, Bucky slash Winter Soldier and turns out he has um, a brainwash code to make him do all the Winter Soldier stuff or the Hydra stuff that the dirty work that they don't want to do at all. We see the Hydra agent give, give him the brainwash code and then he does his work and then he like, gets like some type of like formula and also kills the person that he stole it from. So next we cut to modern day and my ass, I don't know why this movie has big ass titles all over it. When they show a new place, the titles are just huge. I don't know why. But then they don't quite fit the movie, kind of. I, the only one that I think will fit is when they go show Queens. It looks like it fits it. That's the only thing why I think they probably did this big ass titles for the places they show. Back to the Avengers. They're doing a mission in Africa, tracking down the rest of Hydra, the order of reigns of Hydra, trying to talk them from being this like formula, whatever. So but Hydra ends up getting out and then and also like be like split up like so like they can like fuse the Avengers of who has what and then like like well we do see crossbones again from the last movie and he fights with Cap and like Black Widow and um Falcon go after the other Hydra agents and while he's fighting with Crossbones, um, Crossbones end up getting defeated and then he mentions Bucky and then that's when Cap freezes. Crossbones had liquid formula all the time and then he used that formula to make a bomb and then tries to explode him and Cap but Scarlet Witch ends up stealing it with her magic pushing Crossbones up into the air and then exploding. That also causing damage because there's a building by them with villains and then that end up killing them and wanted to get shot by this. I actually end up feeling sorry for her throughout this whole film because like she's kind of like innocent like she's like she maybe be all this mighty witch or magic She's not mutant, I can't say mutant, but she's not. Or Miracle Twin or whatever, that's what I remember from the entrance of Winter Soldier. Bomb goes off and like, hearts of villains. But then we get cut away to Tony Stark. And what well, my ass, that is the freakiest thing that we see like, Robert Downey Jr. as a young, so freaky how they age Robert Downey Jr. young to like his 20s. And it's like, it's like bodily creepy almost, in a way. He's not high, how he was in the 90s. But it's still pretty cool that Marvel and Disney can do this type of thing to like age the uh, actor down to like their teens or twenties or thirties, like how they did in Ant Man. But um, the guy who hate him, like the guy's name, um, they age him. It was so fascinating how they de aged Robert Downey Jr. But it's still freaky. And I do like the chemistry um how the guy from Mad Men, I don't remember his name, um, the guy that plays Mr. Stark. Yeah, it's really exciting because I really wanted to like see how Tony will react to his father. That's pretty cool, actually. So he's giving a lecture at, like, the college. And the lecture, he gives money to all the students, like, so they all to pay their funds or whatever. And then, we also see at the, at the proper, how, like, you see, like, going to the word or whatever. And it says, like, Pepper couldn't make it or whatever. I do not know that if it's mentioned in the movie that, I guess, that Tony and Pepper are having relationship problems. I can guess why she had, would have that problem with, like, Tony being this crazy scientist and she's, like, being this normal person that's normal. And that's what I like about the Iron Man movies. Some of the old parts of the Iron Man movies, how, like, he was this crazy scientist that built an Iron Man suit and she was, like, this normal person. I was kind of expecting Grant Pato to be in this movie because I really like the chemistry in the Iron Man movies and Pop and also that little scene they have in Avengers, so. Well, sadly disappointed to not see her. So, so while he leaves the auditorium to go to the elevator, um, he meets a woman that says, like, you killed my son while you were in Sokovia. Like, first I thought, like, the Avengers got all the people out of them, but maybe there was some that didn't survive, which is why this lady's here. And that reaction that Tony felt, like, he got, like, very sad, like, how, like, he couldn't save everyone during that time. That strikes Tony, how they couldn't. So next we get... General Ross, or now should I say Secretary Ross, talking to the Avengers about like, oh there's some people who like you and like want you to save the day and be around forever and then there are people who are like scared of you and like go away, we don't need you. The world's afraid of your, your actions of being too powerful. So next he shows some footage of like some of the crises that happened like throughout the years of New York, Washington, Sokovia, and now 
Nigeria. And I liked how they didn't like show stock footage, like how you saw in a trailer. So I'm glad they showed it from a different angle. You saw like the Hulk jumping, like you saw like other things, like you saw like when like the hell carrier was falling down from the Winter Soldier. You saw like a from a person's iPhone perspective. That was pretty neat, I thought. So like not to use stock footage because that's kind of dumb and cheesy, kind of like Power Rangers sometimes. <laughs> so next, Guild of the Avengers, Sokovia Accords, which. If you sign this, you'll become part of government. Like how in the Civil War comic, it was a superhero registration act. So Ross leaves and then the Avengers debate on like, this is not right, like, we can't like, work for the military, like, be like dogs of the military, like, and then one side is like, we should do this, and we're like, we're dangerous. Tony comes into the conversation. He talks about the kid, like, that the woman talks to him about, but it was only one person. He didn't do any research or anything else to like, find out what happened about other people that possibly died. Like, really? Just one person? Can you, like, dig deep into that? If he would have found more things, he would probably find out about the villain, too. So, that's a little plot hole, whatever. So now let's talk about our, our villain. All of the superhero madness and fighting each other there is a villain. Can't believe it. So we see Zemo, our villain, trying to look for, like, Colossus Hydra files, like, he does find, like, the Winter Soldier's, like, command book, and, like, they didn't show it fully, I guess, like, there's something that has to do with December 16th, 1991. It's probably that assassination he did when he, in the beginning of the movie. The reason why he probably knows about all this stuff is because of, because of the last movie, how, um, Black Widow released all the Hydra files and S.H.I.E.L.D. files to the public. That's how Zemo got it. So next we cut to, um, Wakanda King announcing the Sokovia Accords at, um, press conference. I think it's, I don't know where it was. Was it the U.S.? Was it, I forgot, like, they show, oh my god, those big ass titles are also white, so it's hard to, like, read some of them. It's also, they should have gone with black, I think. I can see it better. Or have, like, white words with black outlines so I can, like, read it better, like how I do with my thumbnails. During this announcement, the place was attacked, and then Wakanda King died, and then his son, Chikala, after that, seeks revenge. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Chikala, being correct. So, the security goes through, like, the camera, see who did it, and it turned out it was Bucky that was part of the attack. So now, Cap needs to go looking for him before, like, the government finds him. And also, with the help of Agent Carter, not Peggy Carter, it's her niece, Sarah Carter, which Peggy does die in the funeral. I was hoping to see her. Like, we did see her funeral, like, Cap did at the funeral, and also Sharon Carter. That's how we knew that they're related. So Sharon helps, like, Cap find Bucky without, like, physically helping him, because, like, she's part of the FBI, too, and the FBI, the FBI want her to be on the case, hunting down Bucky, so, and she wants to help her friend, too. So he does find Bucky, and then he's at this, like, I don't know, I think it's in Spain, probably. Kind of run down place, and then talks to him, like, do you know who I am? He's like, you're Steve, I've seen you in the museum, and I don't fully know who you are, but that's all I know. And he asks him, did you do the attack? And he's like, no, I don't do that kind of stuff no more. And people are coming for you, which they do find him, because, like, earlier, there's one guy that sees him. So they come for him. I love this movie's action. Like, they're like, I forgot to mention the action in the movie in the beginning. And this is super fun, because, like, I, I like when it's hand-to-hand combat. Like, oh my god, I forgot. Did Black Widow ever punch anybody in, the, in any of the Avenger movies? Or Captain America and Iron Man? Like, she like, really punched somebody. Like, I know that sounds stupid, but, like, I never seen her do it. I seen her do jump kicks. She did that, her secret, her move, whatever. But she, like, really. That's all I have to mention. I was like, shocked by it. I don't know why, but yeah. But back to Bucky and Cat, like, how they were fighting these soldiers and it was awesome. Like, I don't know why, but I always laugh when somebody throws, like, a, a brick or a cinder block at somebody's chest or whatever. I don't know why, like, Buck throws a cinder block at one of the middle of the guy's chest or whatever. And I just laugh at it, like, when he, well, obviously, he threw the brick with a super hard, he can't, like, physically lift up a cinder block and, like, Unless you can, probably, and throw at somebody, but it was like, and then I just laughed. <laughs> so while in this chase, like, we are introduced to the Black Panther, and I actually like this, like, introduction, like, to him, like, it, we knew I used Chitala, but if you're, like, the casual audience and you don't know what's happening, like, who's this guy? And then he takes off the helmet, like, right there, and like, <gasps> The reason why I say this is because, um, when I saw it for a second time, I was with my mom for, like, her mother's day. Um, yeah, um, she just wanted to spend time with her boys, and I just wanted to see Captain America again. And they, my brother already saw it for, like, two times, and this is the third time, so we had a fun time, and, like, she had a fun time, too. So, and she was like, oh, we're in theater, and we were, like, she was, like, wondering who's this black, tired guy, whatever, she like, and she found out, like, 
the prince of Wakanda, or now king of Wakanda. So it's pretty shocking for like, just normal people. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, I do like his like pantherness, like whoosh, scratching the shit out of him. He's like, I still don't know how you weave metal into like a suit. Somebody needs to explain that to me. Like, how do you do that? So after all that chasing around and awesomeness, quick mention: the Russo brothers actually use actual cars for like that flipping of like. Captain America's like running from the car. That's not CGI, that's real shit. Like, I, I forgot what the car company was. Like, he just gave him like a bunch of cars to like destroy and shit. Like, hey Marvel, if you don't have any red cars, can I have, can my family have one? Because we like, need a new one. Just a quick note, so yeah. Help people out sometimes. Come on. You're all about making fans happy, so come on, come on, give us a car. They didn't use. So Bucky and Cat gets captured. Captain Falcon's stuff gets taken away and Bucky gets captured. So everyone's like sitting there like wow like Cat sees his friend like in a cage and like people are asking questions and then the psychiatrist right there is asking questions with the psychiatrist says Zemo. Is he really? Or is he not? So, like at the time. And he ends up being not the psychiatrist. He actually he actually uses like a wave bomb, whatever, to like shut down all technology around them. Everything is shut down, and then Bucky's in the cage, and then Zemo is using the code to like brainwash him, and also to find out what happened in December 16th, 1991. So then Buck goes off in the facility, and then everyone attacks Bucky except for like, I guess, oh, like, Cat does fight Bucky, and Falcon fights Bucky a, a little bit, but uh, yeah. So everyone, everyone uh, fights Bucky at one point. I really like when um Bucky and Tony are like having like a little fight right there too. Cause I never really see like Tony do like any like fist fights, except for the training he did with um Happy in Iron Man 2. But that doesn't count. That's not a real fight unless you count like all the stuff that happened in Iron Man 3. But like he still had his um his little things right there. Oh he has a, a little hand thing right there. I forgot about that. But it was not really like a. Kill mode is like more like a pushback mode or whatever. Or stun phase um glove. No, stun, yes. That's what you call it. stun glove. Tony actually got to fight a little bit too, and we see more of like Black Widow fighting. I really like when Black Widow fights actually. And also Agent 13, Sharon Carter, she kicks ass too. And some more of T'Challa without his suit. He might get to use that ring to use his powers. So that's what I'm guessing. Or I think one of the things I heard that he uses the power of his ancestors to fight. Something like that. But Bucky's trying to escape. And then Cap goes for him like, that helicopter scene is just really so cool. Like, he's like, pulls it. <laughs> Down like nothing. I really like how the Russo brothers just show his like true super soldier self. None of the Avengers movies like truly do that, or uh, so I think Age of Ultron, but not the first Captain America didn't really truly show that, or the end first Avenger truly didn't show that either. But except for him jumping a lot, when Russo took over, it's like super soldier up oh, big time. So well, Cap and Falcon are in this like abandoned warehouse, and like Bucky's tied up, and then he starts waking up and starts remembering who he is and like what he did of all his memories, and also what he did during the time when he was the Winter Soldier. Gosh, that's like that could be horrible. Like you can see the people you killed and all that stuff. Like it's horrible. And he also told that what Zemo is going to do. Like turns out like those like memory chips that we saw where our files were like it was like formulas to make super soldiers and that's where Zemo is going towards the Hydra base that we saw in the beginning and the super soldiers are there frozen so Cap needs a plan to get him and Buck and Falcon to to there and then Falcon suggests is like I know a guy cuts to like oh that was like the end credits of um Ant-Man so yeah we see Ant-Man we can see the new reboot of we can see Scott Lane now. But over at um that facility that they were in, like where Bucky was captured, Tony and Natasha talking about like what what's going to happen. Like oh we know um we probably have to stop Cap and like we need like people. And Tony talks about his new recruit that he's been like searching on, and we can see Spider Man. But when we can see um Tom Holland. As Kate Parker and like Marissa told me as Aunt May. Well, I was also disappointed because I was like expecting like him to live in poverty, like be poor or whatever. Like he's kind of like middle class, which for me was kind of disappointing. And like I was expecting to, for Marissa told me to me not look so glamorous because like <sighs> the internet like say she's like the hot aunt or whatever and stuff like that. I was hoping like she wouldn't be like that, but she is anyway. 
like, because uh, I just want the internet to shut up sometimes, and then it's like, okay, okay, she's not that hot. She's like, she looks like an unattractive ant. Like that's why I was expecting. Oh, but that's like Marvel's takes like versus all the way hot. Let's make her a high ant, whatever. But yeah, we can see Spider Man. He has like the his homemade suit, his cheap suit, and then like the web shooter. And then Tony suggests like, oh, you should. Come with me, and like, what is it? France or whatever, right? Like, whatever, Europe, and like, we gotta fight and give you a new suit, whatever. And so he does. And also, like, how this Peter Parker is very nerdy and like, kind of fun. Nerdy and like, yeah, about Tony Stark. We really like this Peter Parker right, already, so. And what he does throughout the rest of the movie as well. I really like it. Uh, what else I really like is uh, Paul Rudd and Scott Lang in this movie. I like him more in Civil War than I, I did in Ant Man, because uh, his jokes were a lot more funnier. Oh, forgot to talk about how um, Hawkeye was like trying to like, get Scar Witch, and like we see her like also overpowered the vision, like the weird ball thing, and like sent him through like three floors down. And we also really like Hawkeye in this movie. Not that much lines from him, but I was kind of glad because like, well, we don't need a lot from Hawkeye. So the last Avenger movie did like we care for Hawkeye a little bit more now. So now we get to see the final fight, the big action pack hero versus hero. Friend versus friend. Very awesome to see. Oh my god, that's a superhero battle. Superhero battle. <sighs> really like it. Like speaking of, when we see splat page scene, it's when they're close up to each other. It's also in the one of those TV spots I've seen. It's when Iron Man and Captain America are like about to cross fists. That's when we see the splat page scene. It's not when you see the heroes line up, or something like it is, but it could also be when something's happening. The Avengers are about to clash, not when they're like uh, far from each other, and then they're not clash. It's not that, not at all. I like how like they switch partners when they're fighting. Like sometimes it's like Captain America against Spider Man, sometimes it's um, Captain America against Black Panther. Sometimes it's Ant Man against Black Widow. That's also in the beginning. <laughs> I just remembered um, when um, Spider Man gets his shields and then Ant Man gets back his shields. Like, he full, it's just his full, like, weird, awkward, not awkward, like, very, like, comedic. And I, I just laughed, like, say, here you go, Captain America, like, like that, like, very uh, patriotic, like, that's what he said, like, here you go, Captain America. And then there's the one thing, um, he gives him a small truck, and he's like, throw the, I'll throw the truck, and I'll throw this, and then it'll be big. And he was like, oh, shit, that was a water truck. I really like Ant Man, like, oh my god. This line, these one liners are much more better, like, oh my god. And then Spider Man is like having like fun, like fighting the Winter Soldier and Falcon, like, he's talking, like, Falcon's like, you don't talk when you fight. Sorry, I'm new to this. We're like when Ant Man goes into like Iron Man's suit, he's like, this is your conscience. We don't really talk that much. Also, Ant Man on an arrow! That was pretty cool, like, I wonder if he threw up. And also, when he went giant, man, he's like, oh, another black page scene when he went like, like when he was like that, when I saw that, I was like, holy crap! And then Spider Man goes, holy crap! That's my reaction to that, too! Like, oh my god! Oh my god, this movie's so fun! Like, that superhero battle was like, oh great! And then it ends with Rhodey getting shot by down by Vision. Well, Black Widow ends up training Iron Man and helping out Captain Bucky to the Hydra base where Baron Zemo is. And it also, like, well, there's one thing that bothers me, like, there's like before the big fight. Iron Man and Ant Man, the CGI for the suits, like, it's very noticeable and, like, very, like, low. I don't know why they did that. Why couldn't you just have, like, this, like, regular suit? I've seen the Ant Man suit there or from set photos. Like, why does it have to be like that? Or they're trying to make it shiny or whatever, because it was pretty shiny and very CGI. I, that was just one complaint. After when he became Giant Man, like, he like became all giant man out. It's like he took off his helmet. Like, <laughs> does anybody have any orange slices? I really liked that part. Like when I came out there for the first time, that was the only part I was thinking of the whole time. I don't know why. It was so hilarious. I really liked that. So when um when the other team got captured and Tony's really them in that info down. That's what I'm calling it info down. I know it's Prison 42, but it's probably not Prison 42. Well, Prison 42 is supposed to be like in um. The negative zone, it could be not 42. I did read Civil War, so I do know, like, but I'm not saying that could possibly be Prison 42, or when Tony was actually going to there, he actually finds out that the person that was supposed to, like, interrogate Bucky or the, the psychiatrist found out, like, the real one was dead. That's awesome. One of the Russo Brothers cameos. Now I found, like, the guy that interrogated Bucky 
was not the real guy. So, so that's why he's there, and he goes to ask Sam, like, if your hands are up, he actually tampered with that, so, like, no one will see what's going on, like, to, like, hear what's going on. So he asks, like, I'm blocking them, where'd he go? Hurry up, you only got, like, like, 10 seconds. And then Sam tells them, like, he's going to the Hydra base to stop, like, superhero soldiers from being released. So, when he, he actually does go, and, like, oh, I'm not, I'm with you guys now, I'm sorry you know, about everything else, like, calm down, soldier. And at that point, I'm like, okay, there's that one scene still, like, from the trailer. That one scene still in my mind, like, where's that gonna go? Is, like, is Tony gonna get brainwashed or something? Whatever. I was also expecting, like, Zemo to find that sword he has in the comics and wear that purple mask, too, but I'm glad he didn't. Because, like, what we got was, like, actually more better than, like, having, like, a superheroes team up and then battle the bad guy. And I also thought that they were gonna fight those like, extra Winter Soldiers, too. But it seemed, turned out that Zemo killed him. And it turned out, like, when you're talking to Zemo, um, so that he was, like, his family was in Sokovia, and he was outside of Sokovia, like, doing some military stuff, but, it, like, because he's part of the military of Sokovia. And also, like, during, early on in the movie, before, like, all this happened, you actually hear this, like, you think his wife is calling him, and then you think, like, what's happening here? Like, oh. And it turns out, as a recording that, his wife left him. And then, he, so he talks about, like, you, you Avengers killed my family while you're in Sokovia. Blame it on Ultron, well, you can also blame that on Tony Stark for creating Ultron, so blame it on him only. So, and then, he shows Cap, Bucky, and Tony this tape of the Winter Soldier killing Mr. Stark and Mrs. Stark. And then Tony goes like, do you know? And Cap goes like, yeah. And then you go like, oh, crap. And then, we get the final battle. Cap. Buck and Iron Man, this is where we get that one epic shot. And also some Mario stuff. <laughs> Buggy like jump up trying to get out of there. Trying to get out of like the missile area. It kinda reminds you of Mario. Whoop, whoop, whoop. But we get to like that one part like what's going to happen? It's like is Captain America gonna die at this point? Is Tony gonna die at this point? What's happening here? I was right when Cat does it, I can do this all day. Buck does not save him. At that point, his arm is blown off and he's knocked on the floor. Like, I'm excited because everybody's like, well, because like how in the first Captain America when, when Captain America says, I can do this all day. Buck saves him. Hey, but that's after when Bucky's down. I'm excited. Or kind of does save him. He grabs Tony's like leg. I don't call that saving him. Because I call that teamwork, mostly. But it's just like, oh my god, it's like breathtaking, like, that final fight, like, blown away. And also, Cap beats the shit out of Iron Man. Well, just like Batman beats the shit out of Superman, it's all win-win. Because I was team Batman, and also, also Captain America, so I'm the true winner. Or, people who are both Batman and Captain America side on this hashtag, Team Who, are the true winners. It's fine if you're like, just want to see the movie, and you're probably the true winners. But, yeah. Yeah, if you're like Team Batman and Team Captain America, you are true winners for like, that side. Feels great, right? And then we get our casual Stanley cameo. I wonder, because like when Cap sends him the that box to give that old cell phone, and then the Stanley cameo, he's like, Tony Stank? I wonder if Steve wrote that on purpose. I'm wondering, I'm very wondering. That would be hilarious if that like, Stanley's mail guy didn't or misread it. I'm really hoping that was real. That would be really funny. Man, you stank in that fight. And also, you threw down his shield. Because, like, that shield doesn't belong to you. It's my father. My father created it. And he really doesn't need that. Because I was thinking that shield is connected to his past. And now, Bucky is his part of his past. So he doesn't need that shield anymore. So, he, he gets that package. And then he gets that cell phone. And he gets, like, the letter. Like, if you need us, like, we'll be there. Just call us. If the situation gets too out of hand. And, like, the government doesn't want uh, Tony's new Avengers to not do the work. Let's call Cap Secret Avengers. Or now he could be no man, I think, where he wears like a black suit. He only still has this Captain Mercury suit, so he doesn't wear that, so he doesn't be called. So he can play in black, he can be no man. Also, like, he took down all the people at the prison or info down, free all his buddies. I wonder what's gonna happen in Ant Man and the Wasp, because, like, is he gonna be a fugitive? Is um, the Wasp gonna find him too? I'm just, just a little curious about that now. I'm also excited for all these other movies, so I am curious to what, see what happens to uh, all these characters. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah, this movie. Movie is um a nine out of ten. I do think this movie is possibly better than Avengers: The Soldier, and also to be honest with myself, it is better than Batman v Superman too. So I did give it a nine. So how Batman v Superman, I give it a seven point eight out of ten. So yeah, so I'm just being honest. Like I I like both, but it's like I prefer that this is the better version of Batman v Superman.
are there are some minorities to it. I, mean, I just really enjoyed it. I can't wait for all the other movies from Marvel Phase 3. Like, I really can't wait. Like, especially Infinity War. It's also, Russo Brothers are going to do that, too. What do you think of Captain America Civil War? Place your comments down below. Give me a like. It really helps out. And subscribe for more. Catman, you did a great job. So, if you want to watch more of my videos, my last normal video will be right here. And my Batman v Superman video will be right here. I've been mapping one. And... Captain America Explosion! <laughs>